Wizards is often called the king of gangbang, gangbanging not only your rectum, but also your wallet. This time around, it's the green players who have it rough, losing not one, not two, but three cards to the ban. But in reality, they really lost five cards. But here on the Magic Cage channel, we aid victims of gangbang, which is why daddy's gonna help blue green players find a new deck. And I think I am quite up to the task. Given that back before Throne of Eldraine spoilers even finished, I predicted that the best deck would be Sultai Oko tokens. Hashtag humble. But today is not about Oko. Rather, it is about blue green galloping to victory. And that brings us to Daddy's Masterpiece. It's actually a pretty simple deck. There are 16 adventure cards and 10 elemental cards. And to top it off, we have our payoff cards Nissa, Hydroid, and the Great Henge. With Oko gone, the Great Henge got a lot better. It makes two green, it gains us two life, and whenever we play a non-token creature, we put a 1-1 counter on it and we draw a card. It's pretty good. And that's the deck in a nutshell. It's a draw card ramp deck, one that happens to be quite powerful. As for the sideboard, it's a bit messy, and that is because it is tailored around Bay of Wishes. We can dig through our sideboard for a non-creature card and put it in the hand, and we have tons and tons of options. The main go-to ones are Turn to Nature, takes out artifacts and enchantments, and also mass manipulation, steals creatures and planeswalkers. There's also Vivian, just pretty good value, kills a creature sometimes. And for a great finisher, we have Return of the Wild Speaker. It pumps our non-humans by three, and it's a great way of saying F you to our opponent. But enough talk, we all want to see this deck in action. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already a big boy. But without further ado, here's gameplay, and I hope you enjoy. Opening hand, ramp and late game stuff, so yeah, we'll keep. And do innkeeper. But we'll play land tap, bottoming this. And let's see what our opponents got. Cauldron familiar, okay. But then back on our turn. We'll start ramping by playing the druid and then pass back. But oh, they make us sack it. Sure. We go to 16. But then back on our turn. Play the innkeeper and make a human token. And then it's back to them. And oh, they attack. Mm, suspicious. So no blocks. And they play another familiar. But I think it's time for a spanking. Cast the love struck beast. And then it's back to our opponent. But if they don't hit a land here, they will be very sad in pawns. Oh, that is interesting. So they can ping our dude, which they do. And come on, land. Oh. Well, that's not a land. But on the bright side, we can do this. Henge, game two, play the druid. And now much hoppiness and pawns. And there's our fifth land. Hooray. So it's looking like Nissa next turn. And ooh, Witch's Oven. Normally that'd be a problem, but with the Henge, we're gaining two life a turn. And nice, another land. So here's what we'll do. Play Nissa who shakes them titties. Animate a land. And then make a nut ton of mana. Hooray. And draw yet another card with the Henge. And they better have a way to kill the Hydrate. Because eight damage next turn, yeah. Oh, and they make a sacrifice Nissa. Fair well, fun bags. They shall be missed. But now, so many options. We could use Fair Wishes to grab a sideboard card like the Spyglass, or even Wild Speaker. But given how low they are on mana, I think our best option might be just to dump stuff here. Yeah, Risen Reef, giving us the double draw. Land nice. And another Nissa, hooray! So now it's time for some Nissa fun times. Play Nissa, animate a land, and then swing in for a bunch. They chump, but still take 11. Man, what, they didn't even sack? Day on the crack pipe. It appears they've given up, so I don't want to show them too much of our deck. So instead of getting a card with Fae this turn, we'll just pass back and try not to show them anything else. So animate a land and swing with everyone. Walks like that, but that puts them at negative seven. And there's game one. That might have been the biggest blowout that I've seen since eating at Taco Bell. Minus the crying, though. But now it's only game two. We shall bring in Return to Nature for Witch's Oven. But with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, a little late game heavy. But we got some good ramp here, so we'll keep. Oh, I was hoping they would duress us here. Start with the temple, which is not too early for that. They start with a mask. And back on our turn, we'll play the druid. And what? They swing in? Uh, uh Okay, probably too risky to block. Oh, but they're gonna gain control and sack it. Okay. We gotta be careful they don't claim the firstborn on the Hydroid. I could definitely see us losing to that. But back on our turn, play Risen Reef, even though it's probably gonna get pinged. And hooray, a land. And ooh, another land on top. And then five lands will make Cavalier. And they play Judith. So when they sack with the mask, they can essentially deal two, even though it does cost two mana with the mask. Oof. If they do that twice, it's four, it's a lot of damage. So luckily the Cavalier is a thick boy. And it also happens to trigger the Reef. Grab a land and a leaf can. And I would play an innkeeper, but it's gonna get ping next turn. So I'll just hang on to it and pass back. What is this? Oh, mayhem devil. But I still think they're a little too slow here, especially when we draw Nissa. So many amazing options here. But probably Nissa and the Hydra is the best, even though they could push a lot of damage soon. But all right, we'll go for it. You shake them titties, Nissa. And then play the druid, grabbing a land, and then animate, swinging for three. Even though they could kill here. No, they don't block. All right, they're probably gonna go after a life total. And if they hit a land here, that actually could be lethal because every sack deals one two three yeah if they can sacrifice a non-token at least and oh they take our island come on we just need to survive until next turn Ooh, and they're only attacking with the island that is most good for us okay block there because it would have been a good target for ping anyway and all oh, they're gonna get rid of our island and what they all akbar and nissa not all akbar at us okay and they put it on the token but the power of math only deals two i think they have the big downs but that's okay we all have the big 
big downs to some degree. And now it's time for Hydroid. Oh, uh, uh, oh my gosh. I do have the big downs. I only made green mana. Well, oh, oh no. This is a little awkward. Uh, okay, we're gonna play ca Cavalier Island. And now we can play the Hydroid. Quite a lot of card draw. Swing for five, putting them at 14. But please do not have claim the firstborn. Okay, good. Because on Crassus, that would be pretty bad for us. And oh, they all occupy the cat at Nyssa. So we'll lose Nyssa, unfortunately. Nyssa's now with Jesus. And can we push lethal nine? We can block all of them, or at least these two. Yeah, we're in a really good position here. But I think the best move here, play the Hydroid and try and hit a Brazen Borrower. That way we could bounce a creature. Nah, that's a whiff. Oh, well, swing like this. And they're forced to block like that. Oh, and they finish off one of our Cavaliers. So that means we can put Nyssa on top and might as well make a couple human tokens. What shall our opponent do in their final moments? They, oh no, they make a sack of creature. No, yeah. oh no, a uh, Dreadhorde Butcher. How will we deal with a 1-1? One, one? I don't know. But now the spanking is complete. They have zero cards in hand and can't do anything. And so it ends. Not a very close match, but we did learn a lot, like how Taco Bell causes explosive diarrhea and that we all have downs. But now it's on to the next match. Opening hand kind of works, so we'll keep it. Oh, it looks like they're green blue as well. We pull an innkeeper, we'll play it now and pass it back. Oh, and it appears they're not just blue green. Huh. And another innkeeper. Okay, here's what we'll do. Play innkeeper. And Fave wishes to draw two cards. Oh, but they counter? Yeah, that's fine. And oh, back on their turn, they sweep us. Oh, okay. But we'll follow up with Risen Reef. Plan nice. And then Temple. Avalier, we already have one, but yeah, we can use another one. And oh, goody, they're a reclamation deck. Oh, we'll attempt the Cavalier. Lay off. But then Cavalier hits. And nice, we get Fave wishes. Which means we can dig through our sideboard to take out the reclamation. And then hit them for one. And back to them. They play land, go there, and step. And luckily, nothing. We'll first swing for six. They go to 12 and now let's try Fae of Wishes. Come on. No, I negate it. All right. We'll have to win the hard way. Play Risen Reef. Getting two triggers. Nissa and Innkeeper. And at the end of our turn, they flame sweep us. Okay. And then on their turn, they draw two cards. And after they're untapped, they go Gross Spiral. But then it's back to us again. I suppose we'll try and get away with it and go with Nissa. Come on. Hooray. Animated land. Swing for eight. They go to four and he might as well go with Cavalier of Thorns. And no counter. Head land and might as well go with Risen Reef. Another fail wish is nice. How will they get out of this? I imagine they're going to draw two cards here. Yep, they draw another card on their turn. Scribe, but how do they stop this? The answer is they don't because there's a concede. Ooh, and in the game two, we're going to have to take out the reclamation. So we're going to bring in this stuff and dump this stuff. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, not the most impressive, but we'll hopefully top deck something good. So we'll keep. We'll keep her sure. Hit them for one. They grow spiral. And look at them. They already have four lands. Oh, reclamation. We'll need to find a way to stop reclamation. The question is do we want to bounce or just go fey wishes they could have counter they probably have counter in that case we probably want to go with the borrower instead what is these they scry too which means now's a great time for petty theft bounce that to hand so we'll go with fey of wishes grabbing return to nature even though we'll have to wait to play it because we only have one mana here but they'll have to play around it for sure if they play the reclamation here then we know they have counter ready for this they do play reclamation they op and uh oh they're floating green draw two very suspicious but we'll swing for one and play risen reef another borrower or cool, which means we have a lot of options. We get bounce, kill, or even flash in borrower to attack next turn. See if they tap out. Ooh, down to two. They probably have negate. We'll see if they tap out entirely here. Yeah, no, too good to be true. And oh, it's tasty Tammy. Basically, just a way to dig for cards and turn stuff in graveyard. And before they get to name, we'll try and bounce the reclamation. I'm sure it's gonna fail, but you know, we gotta try. Oh, it actually works. Okay. They name negate with tasty Tammy, but with the fact that they name negate though means they might not have one in hand. Interesting, interesting. Oh, we have a lot of good options here. The best would probably be Innkeeper. Now I can make two mana here, Risen Reef, hitting another Brazen, and another Fae. Interesting. We have many options here, but the priority should still be to try and take out the Reclamation if they play it. Oh, Reclamation. And they return Flame Sweep to hand. Ouch. I think we just gotta go for it. Return to Nature. Going after the Reclamation. Will they tap out, though? Only three open. Oh, but they Aether Guest. So we'll put back on top. But now they're down to one mana. They could have a Mystical Dispute, but it's worth trying. Petty Theft on the Reclamation. If this bounces here, yeah, I think we might have it here. Cast Fey. Draw two. Hidden Nissa, nice. Animate a land. Then swing three at Tasty Tammy and four at them. And we could dig for something from Sideboard, but I'm trying to think what we'd get. Yeah, nothing really stands out at the moment. We'll send it back. Back on their turn, they Flame Sweep. Okay, but if they play Reclamation, we have Return to Nature for it. Oh, Petty Theft bouncing the Nissa. Okay, but they play that Tapped and Pass. 
Hmm. Flash in a brazen borrower. What is these? They're gonna flash in their brazen borrower? All right, fine. Let's start by shaking them titties. Crap, what can we get? We have potentially two, four, six, eight, ten. Vivian can't win it this turn, but that'll be pretty close to locking it down. So we'll go with Faye, grabbing Vivian, killing the borrower, and then animate a land, swing for seven. And now we're in a decent position. Even if they could somehow wipe us, we have two planeswalkers. Uh oh. Ah, shoot, Niv. But I don't think that's enough, is it? They go to one and they play reclamation, but I think that's it. Return to nature, reclamation. They take out a borrower, but then we top deck a borrower. We'll first up Vivian, bounce the Niv, and that should be the end. Animate, swing, and finally, dang. It might have seemed like it was a one sided match, but with reclamation, once reclamation is out, they could just go off. It could have easily gone their way. Luckily, we had Faye, and we were able to get Return to Nature. But without that, I'm sure our opponent would have blown us out there. Yeah. But now it's on to the next match. Opening hand really isn't that great, so we're going to mull. Dang, this is also pretty bad, but we'll bottom a land and keep. Scry, oh, bottom. And then back on our turn, we pull Fae of Wishes. And eh, we'll just hang on to it. And pass back. Ah, it looks like we're up against Golgari Adventure. Yep, they could go off pretty quickly. But if we can hit a land here with Risen Reef, then next turn is Nissa. Oh, that's not a land. All right, back to our opponent. Another innkeeper. How they get so lucky with their opening hand? Okay. We pull innkeeper a bit. Let's go with Druid. We hit a land cool. Then we'll play our innkeeper a land and pass back. And they keep coming in. We'll just take it because if these die, they could potentially return it to their hand. Yep, with Order of Midnight. They finish up with Paradise Druid. And I think best move here, play Nissa. And now because we have four creatures, the Druid will make two. And we'll play Fae of Wishes, grabbing Vivian. And then swing for three. They take it and it's back to them. And what is these? Oh, they have a Nissa of their own. This shall be tricky. Oh, and they kill our Nissa. And nice, Risen Reef. First, let's play Nissa. And then Risen Reef. Hit a Cavalier, nice. And a Breeding Pool. And luckily for us, we have just enough for Cavalier. So many triggers. Ooh, nice, Breeding Pool. Temple. And yeah, we can keep that. And with the remaining two, cast Fae. That draws us a card. And now our board is becoming quite thick. Luckily, we have a Fae. And if we can keep our board alive, we could Fae into Wild Speaker, even Mass Manipulation. But they are drawing a lot of cards as well. Will they swing? Yeah, they do. Huh. Oh, but they kill our thick boy. Might as well put Faye on top. Blocks are a bit tricky here, but blocks like this. And dang, they keep going. You know, I think the best solution in this situation here is going to be really tricky, but I think we can go Faye of Wishes into Mass Manipulation. We can even steal Nissa with that. Okay, let's do that. Faye, Mass Manipulation, and then Animate. So we can take five things, taking these five, keeping their Nissa, untap Forest, and Love Struck. Dang, all right. That does turn things around quite a bit. And with the second Faye around the corner, yep, there's a concede. Man, that was close. Okay. It's so hard to play with the Fae because you always have to think, which of the 15 cards do we need in hand? And it's so hard because you always have to think that. But hooray. Opening hands. So many Risen Reefs will keep. We pull Cavalier and another Risen Reef. Wow. Now we just need lands. Maybe we should use Borrower to bounce something this turn also. It's a little iffy with adventure stuff. Uh, sure, bounce. Ah, and they pass back. Okay. And nice. Risen Reef time. Hitting a land. Very nice. Just pray we hit. Oh, oh, oh shoot. That not good. And oh, no land. Okay. In that case, another another Risen Reef. Double trigger. Brazen. and keeper, And pass back. Oh, Vivian, no. Oh, wait, yes, that's yes, actually pretty good. If they put all the counters on Questing Beast, they could bounce it. Oh, they're splitting them. Fine. So we take five. And I think the best option here, Nissa. Anime. And we must be very careful about how we use this bounce. Hopefully, they'll just activate Vivian here. Targeting their Questing Beast, that'd be so nice. Uh-oh, they play a Lovestruck Beast. And they're using the Vivian target on the Lovestruck. Ouch. This is very risky, but let's bounce the Lovestruck. So the act Activation fizzles, so we still gotta deal with these two hoes. And dang, they're swinging with both. So unfortunately, we gotta block like this. That way, Nissa doesn't die. Oh, never mind. She dies anyway. Oh, okay. Well, that is unfortunate. But on the bright side, we can do this. Cavalier. Land. Meh. Another land. Now, it was a little bit tricky, but swing. Three Vivian. One at them. Bouncing the questing beast. And now Vivian goes to Jesus. Hooray! They have five cards in hand. One's a questing beast. And also love struck. Yeah. And what? Hmm. Very strange. But okay, time for Risen Reefs. Innkeeper. Land. We'll then go another Risen Reef. Land. Hydroid nice. And another Innkeeper. Wow. We'll go double Innkeeper and pass back. Even though if they kill our Cavalier, we're in hella trouble here. Oh, and now, yeah, yeah, we're in hella trouble. At least we can do Nissa on top, but we'll need to chump the Questing Beast. Wah, wah. And now back on our turn, Nissa time. And we'll risk it here. 11, 12, and Hydroid. Such value. And if Hydroid stays alive, we're looking really good. Ooh, nice. Alrighty, back to our opponent. Oh, we also have a Cavalier here. I didn't even see that. Questing Beast comes in. Trade. Three minutes on the clock. Ah, oh, yeah, Cavalier. Oh my gosh, so many triggers. Okay. So much stuff. And then Henge. 17 cards left in deck. In that case, play Innkeeper. Brazen, I guess. Draw three. And then, yeah, token. Love struck. Do we win yet? Oh my god. 
called. Uh, I can't even see what's going on. Uh, uh, swing with some stuff. We have one minute on the clock. How can we win in one minute? Uh, can't think, can't think. Uh, 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 okay, back to our opponent. One plus love struck. And murder strider. Okay, uh, flash in, uh, borrower. Draw four cards left, three cards left. Okay, now go. Uh, fate wishes. That one, that one, there we go. Animate a creature. Play another Nissa. Animate a creature. Play another Nissa. Words. A animate this. And then swing and then, and then buff. Oh, okay. No, no, we had the win. No. <laughs> Why? After all that, we would have buffed our dudes by three. Aww. Well, we would have dealt 72 damage there. Even though we lost, like, can't we just stop and appreciate how much card draw we have? Because Golgari Adventure is supposed to be the card draw deck. And yet we drew 41 more cards than them. Overall, I think the deck did pretty well. So we'll call it a success. But that is all for now. And as always, I hope you have a great day.